food boredom, food fatigue, stockpile. You want to keep the costs down, but you want to have the stuff ready. Hi, this is Jan. Welcome to another episode on my channel, Save Money More with Jan channel. Let's talk today, this Saturday, October 19th, which holds a second significance for Steve Young. I'll talk to you about that in a few minutes. But right away, let's jump into what I want to talk about. It could be boring. It could be frustrating. If you, let's say, are living through a power outage and you're having stuff from your pantry and all of a sudden you start getting bored with the meals. You know what? I realized that there are a couple of things that would really, really help jazz it up, so to speak, if you will. But it depends if you like it. OK, and they're not expensive. They come in a can so you could easily stock up on this. Now, normally I do not keep um, a diet of eating canned spinach all the time. My favorite way to have spinach would either be probably the fresh leaves or the frozen. But I'll tell you the truth, the frozen one, oh my gosh, you get a lot, a lot of value. There's something like four pounds of spinach in one little bit block of spinach. I'm just saying. But let's talk about the one in the can, okay? We all know the fresh one tastes great in a wrap or in a salad. That's, that's a done deal. I mean, it really, really is. But it's not always convenient. So when the power is out and you need nutrition and you don't want to go too far away from anything, a great idea is to make sure to stock up on canned spinach. This is something for me that was an acquired taste because I was used to it the other way. However, you can easily take that canned spinach and add some seasonings like garlic powder, other flavors to it, a pinch of olive oil, and you could literally just eat it out of the can, drain out the juice like season it up and just have it right then and there, put a little salt and pepper in there. You're done as far as like a green vegetable. And it's like right there and very, very convenient. Another way to jazz it up would be, so to speak, make sure you have cans of yams. Now is the time of the year when you could probably get more uh, accessibly. Not all the time are they available, at least by me, I could say that maybe other people could get it all year. However, Cans of yams, especially now when they're hopefully going to go on sale soon for Thanksgiving. So you could actually mix together. I'm talking about in times of an emergency, you're not even heating it up. Open up the can of yams, right? They have their own unique flavor. They're a little sweet and it'll brighten up the spinach, you know, drain the spinach, put it together. Like, I mean, very, very inexpensively, you have a very, very good nutritious put together meal. Also, also consider or just make sure you buy because they're on the cheap, they're in cans, the white potatoes, not only for emergency times, okay, but for re regular times, like, wait a minute, you thought you bought like all the chicken, you want some potatoes with it. You don't want mashed potatoes, you want to put something aside around the, you know, in the oven. Slice potatoes, they sell them whole or slice, you could throw them in soups. You could throw them in stews. These are very versatile, inexpensive foods, okay? So keep that in mind, the canned arena. Also in the canned arena for stockpiling, I highly recommend canned slices of pineapple or my favorite, mandarin oranges. When my fridge was out and I was using that, I'm telling you, just open up the little cans of mandarin oranges. It's just had that burst of citrusy flavor. I like that. I also love the slice or chunks of the canned pineapple. They pack a certain punch and they have that little citrusy thing going on with it, which is so yummy. I'm just saying yummy for the tummy. <laughs> All right, another thing that's really important to keep in your stockpile, maybe we forget to get them, maybe we get them and maybe we forget they're there, but that's why it's important to check your stuff over. Um, whole grain crackers. And I also like to get graham crackers. Okay. Some people think of it as a cookie, but if you think about it, I guess they're called crackers for a reason. It doesn't say graham cookie. It says graham cracker. So I'm thinking officially, well, I can rationalize and call it a cracker, <laughs> but I love good quality graham crackers. And you could also get the traditional, you know, multi-grain crackers. They pack a lot of punch and graham crackers come in between like having a little bit of something sweet, but it's a little bit of crackery. It's got the carbs in it. You see where I'm going with this. And if you just happen to have some nice comforting things like um, instant coffee, your creamer, your hot chocolate, 
even on those bitter days when let's say the power is out and you put it all together, you have some graham crackers to, to have to go with that. And if you have the multi-grain uh, grain crackers, you could get some, for example, um, peanut butter and just, you know, just put a little dabble of peanut butter on for a spread. And that's like right off the bat, like a fast breakfast. It's important to be able to variate the stuff that you have in your stockpile. Everything I mentioned is not expensive. You could get those graham crackers for like literally like two to two to two fifty, two dollars to two fifty. I'm saying that's been my experience. And um, you could get everything else in a can for you know as best as you can, somewhere in the dollar to two dollar range. But these are worth it. These are worth it items. They're not expensive. Just pack them up. Say, you know what? This week I'm going to spend just $10 to put some stuff in my stockpile so it doesn't get boring in any which way. What do I have written here? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. So you indicate on my list to avoid stockpile boredom. Yeah, it could, it could be boring, you know, if you don't rotate it. But always, we're always grateful. We're always grateful. So, I mean, if we even get bored, we have to say to ourselves, you know what? Maybe we shouldn't feel bored. We should feel grateful. That's, you know, substitute boredom for grateful. But if you have these other items to put together and make it a little bit more zippy and exciting, why not? I just thought I'd mention it. I also would like to mention to um, head on over to the Everywhere with Steve Young 74 channel today. I believe he listed it for one o'clock, his premiere. I'm on that show. Um, I was a guest on the show and he's celebrating his four year tube anniversary. Being on this platform for four years is nothing to sneeze at. So Steve, congratulations. It was fun doing that show. Uh, there are some fun trivia questions going on. So if you're interested, bring a cup of coffee. And uh, I think his show probably runs near 15 or 20 minutes, not too long, not too short, but it was fun. And uh, if you'd like to you know, stop on over, just head on over to his channel to check the exact time and maybe receive a notification for it. So join me in congratulating Steve on the four years. Okay. I just hit my sixth year in back in July. Like, am I really doing this for six years? Am I really doing this for six years? So <laughs> we always say this, if we helped at least one person per video, we did our job. And that's the truth. Idealistically, I'd love to help more than one person, but hopefully at the very least one person. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. I really do appreciate everybody's time. Don't forget to come back in the future for some more shows. And uh, I really would appreciate it if you smash down the like button, click like, share, and subscribe. Have an amazing, fantastic remainder of your weekend. Take good care. Bye-bye. I hope I close this out properly. If it takes forever and a day to shut it off, don't wait around for it to go off. Just say, thank you, Janet. Bye. <laughs> well, you don't even have to say thank you, Janet. Just say bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Good luck, Jan. <laughs> Oi. Let's see.